before we engage George Efriye, let's just reload the moments that happened in Cameroon last night where the Black Stars lost their last group game to Comoros. That game ended 3-2 in favor of the Comoros Islanders, a team that was making their debut in the tournament. English was the cause of the side's problems. We're underway then in Garua, where Ghana and Comoros, they've come back from... The gone by Tuesday night was one of the nights in the history of Ghana football. Anyone affiliated to football in the country would want to forget Ridley because it was the fourth time Ghana got knocked out of the group stages of the African Cup of Nations. And it was the first time ever Ghana exited the competition without winning a single game. Well, uh, my colleague Gary Alfmate questioned the head coach of the Black Stars, Milovan Rivard, whether he would resign from his role as head coach of the senior national team. According to him, he was hired by the football governing body to qualify the country to the next World Cup in Qatar, and the tournament African Cup of Nations was just a primary preparatory ground for the main World Cup qualifiers. <laughs> Ovaj drugi deo je krenuo dobro, mi smo se kvalifikovali za kvalifikacije za svjetsko prvenstvo, to nam je cilj. Ovdje od prve utakmice nismo imali sreće i dobro, ovaj turnir završao, vidjeli smo šta nam treba, tako da nam je cilj svjetsko prvenstvo. A na takve pitanja ne bih ipak odgovorio. I took this job to take the Ghana team to the World Cup, and as you know, I came to Ghana only three and a half months ago. So you cannot expect, you cannot expect some magic things in just a short period. Uh, That's the head coach of the Black Stars, Milovan Raivaj, saying he took up the job to qualify the country to the next FIFA World Cup. As I stated earlier, this show is brought to you by Electoral and Ghana Limited your home of electronics and appliances. Samsung, it is our passion, it is our game. Continental Africa, connecting Africa, connecting the world. Silver Star Auto, DBS Roofing, your experts when it comes to roofing. Samsung, they are making available 30% discount and surprising gifts for you should you purchase some of their products. This soccer season, Samsung offers you the best deals to enjoy the games at home uh, not just at home, but also on the go. Get up to 30% off televisions, air conditioners, refrigerators, and washing machines, and amazing gifts when you buy the Galaxy A03 Core, A12, A22, Galaxy Z Flip 3, and the newest addition, the Galaxy S21 FE. Enjoy this soccer season with Samsung. It is our passion. It is our game. For a literally in Ghana, they are saying that visit any of Little Langana showrooms for all the mega di Afcon discount on your favorite Samsung, Media, Toshiba, and Nasco Electronics and Appliances. And they continue to say that for as low as 799 Ghana cities, you can enjoy live Afcon matches on Nasco 32-inch digital satellite television. Grab a media bottom freezer starting from 1,499 Ghana cities. 20 liters microwave to keep your food hot at all times. Electroland, your home of electronics and appliances. You can call them on 050 315 for more information. I've been joined via uh, Zoom by the former vice president of the Ghana Football Association, a former management committee chairman of the Ghana Black Stars, and also uh, present bank ruler of Susubi Reef Football Club, George Afrige. George, Thanks very much for your time. So thank you. Um, you you just saw the highlights gone by. If you were the leader of the Ghana Football Association, what would have been the immediate decision you would take? Well, <clears throat> Mufta, thank you. Thank you to terrorist listeners and viewers. Um, it's just unfortunate. Um, some of us when the call-up was made for this tournament. Yeah. We had high hopes. We had high hopes because I still insist that we didn't have a bad team. I still believe that the call-up was good. 
even though at this time that the competition is over, we can make suggestions. You see, when you are in a position like mine, when a call up is made, you can only give up your support because it is not what George Free will say or any other person will say that will change the squad named by the head coach, Milo Van Right. Yeah. The truth still remains that yes, many Ghanaians, including my good self, believe that maybe some few players, if we had the opportunity to get them into the squad, it would have helped. But nevertheless, whatever was presented, some of us still believe that it was a, a relatively good squad and that that squad could still take us to at least a quarter, a quarter finals bet. Now, at this stage, if I was in the position of the leadership of the FA, I would just offer my unqualified apology to the entire nation for disappointing uh, Ghanaians, especially when I have given them high hopes that we were going to win the AFCON. It was based on the promise of the FA president during the the introduction or the unveiling of the head coach yes, yes. to Ghanaian media, where he made it clear that we have a coach capable of winning the AFCON. He's tried and tested, and his record speaks for his. Okay, so so Uncle George, uh, just yeah, just so, stay on there for me. So the... Okay, okay, so just stay on there for me as we try to fix your network. Um, talking about rendering an unqualified apology, well, the Ministry of Youth and Sports have released a statement someone in the Ghana Football Association to their offices on January 21, and we are putting up that statement on your screens right away where the Ministry says that they made available everything that was needed by the Ghana Football Association to ensure that the Black Stars succeed. And the statement says that the entire country is extremely disappointed by the abysmal performance and early exit of the Black Stars from the ongoing 2021 African Cup of Nations in Cameroon. The Minister of Youth and Sports shares in the nation's sentiment. With the government providing the team all the needed logistical and financial support, including resources for preparation and participation in the qualifying stage to the tournament and eventually a pre-tournament campaign in Qatar, the ministry is particularly disappointed with the team's performance. The ministry has summoned the Ghana Football Association GFA leadership to an emergency meeting scheduled for Friday, 21st January 2022, to urgently discuss and take decisions um, aimed at salvaging the performance of the Black Stars, especially in the next set of games. The Ministry of Youth and Sports is committed to taking urgent steps to ensure that the Black Stars is restored to its status as a symbol of national pride for all Ghanaians and powerhouse of African football, signed by Honorable Mustafa Usif, Member of Parliament for Yagba Kubari constituency, and he is the Minister of Youth and Sport. Mr. George Afriye, if you were to go to the Minister of Youth and Sports, what explanation would you offer? But this is a normal proceeding. It's normal. I mean, when you go to any competition, when you come back, you need to report to your sector minister. If there were sources, same, you still have to meet and then you digest and then have a, a total report of whatever transpired during your stay in Cameroon and then in Qatar. So this is a normal process. I mean, we went to government for money. You, you submitted a budget to a sector minister to undertake a project. Yeah. When the project is over, it is normal that you report back to, without even the letter, if the, the minister has not even summoned the FA, the FA in the normal procedure will still go to the minister and then render an account to whatever transpired during the period of preparation and the tournament. So these are normal procedures. So if I'm to go there, I'll just go and present the report, what actually transpired in the training camp, the problems you went through, while some shuttle matches were not able to, to be played or to be added, um, late arrival of players yeah. and all that. You submit a whole report on the whole tournament. And then you also, as a management committee and as an FA, need to also take a position on going forward. So a report must contain the, the, the tournament proper. That is what happened 
proud yes. after the tournament. What are your plans? What are you trying to do? Because there's also a World Cup scheduled and a women away match ahead of us. So what is the way forward? I'm sure the FA will put all those reports together before they meet the minister on Friday. These are normal procedures. Okay, so George Afi, just hang on there for me. Let's hear from former chairman of the Ghana Football Association, Dr. Nyahunya Otamaklo, who has got an interesting take on the caliber of players that were selected for the tournament. According to him, the head coach selected players, he says, are trotro players. See, you look at what is happening in the world. Mm. No one throws his or her money and we just like that. This this is this this is state money. Sure. Now, with the performance that we saw, not just from our board, but the general that will benefit the state more. Mm. Some of them definitely are good footballers. That the do what? That is Dr. Nyahunyaho Tamaklo. According to him, we should not invest in qualifying for the FIFA World Cup because, in his opinion, it will be a waste of resources. George Afriye, what is your position on this? I totally disagree with Dr. Nyahunyaho Tamaklo. I totally disagree with him. Why? You see, it will start moved out. Like I said, if we comb the world, and we are able to put a solid team together, we can do well at the World Cup. First, we can qualify to the World Cup and we can do well. Mufta, others have done it. How were they able to do, this, to do it? And I think that we should find a way to be able to assemble all the players that we think merit a call-up to the Black Stars and then take a bold decision to change the coach or to change the, the technical direction of the team and then take a shot the two, two uh, matches ahead of us. Yeah. What am I trying to say? We have a player like Salisu playing from Southampton. Yeah. This player is a full-blooded Ghanaian. In fact, he started playing football. He's not one of those who were born outside. Yeah. This player, what is the reason why he can't play for the Black Stars? Is there something that people know that we don't know? We, we need to get people who are very influential. Look, in this world, and as Ghanaians, this man knows this person, that man knows that person. This man has a very strong respect for that man. That man has a strong connection to this man. We should find a way to cut these boys into our black stars. Trust me, if we assemble the kind of players I see across the globe yeah. of Ghanaian heritage, trust me, we can still go to the World Cup and do well. So for us, for doctors suggesting that we should stop and that I totally disagree with him. Okay. The World Cup is another platform to sell Ghana. I don't believe that if we do the right thing, we may go and do well. We may not go and embarrass ourselves as others think. Yeah. I think that we just need to do the right thing. I, for the, the World Cup, I support that the FA must go and we must do the right thing before going. As for Milo, I don't support that we should take Milo to the World to, to even play the the, qual the two qualifiers, let alone take him to the World Cup. I, I don't want to see Milo there. Uh, so, so, just, so you, you just mentioned that you don't want to see Milo um, oversee Ghana's uh, participation in the next round of the World Cup qualifiers. What you're suggesting is that the GFA should fire him, right? Oh, yeah. Me, I, I don't support retaining Milo Van right back. You see, I, my position has always been clear. You see, some people miss... miss misinterpret my position of when Milo named the squad and I said, I have confidence in the squad. You see, when you are a former vice, a former vice president of the FA yeah. and you have been the head of the Black Stars, when a coach announces squad, the only thing I can do is to give him my support. I cannot be criticizing the coach. But when you go to the tournament and for my, my estimation and my observation, I can tell clearly that Milo was the reason why we failed to qualify to the next stage. Why? The town. You see, to prepare for a tournament, a lot of factors comes into play. First is the pre-tournament pre campaign. And then second is the campaign itself. Okay. Now, the pre-tournament campaign, the venue of the campaign itself is also a factor. Okay. Now, you have players coming from a cold weather in a winter season, coming to assemble in 
uh, in Qatar of a 22 degrees, which is also not hot. And they end up to play at a tournament where the, the temperature is over 32 degrees. They see this whole preparation was wrong. And so if you have even undertaken that, that, that kind of preparation, where you took players from a 22 degrees to a 32 degrees weather, what do you do? Players who are coming from Europe and have actually played for 60, 70 minutes. Quickly, you do your substitution so you can introduce new fresh limbs. Milo will wait to at the fifth minute, at the sixth minute when he's down before he will set substitution. So for me, we lost, we lost by proper game management from a coach. I don't want to blame anybody. I blame the coach for the performance turned out by our, so our players. The players, some of them give out their best. We also, they are used. They give out their best. They have to play what they think they can. But it gets to a time when football is science, when the human body gets tired. And it's, the, it's for that reason that FIFA, looking at what is going on, the COVID and all that, has given us the opportunity to change, make five changes. Why don't you take advantage of it? You wait till the last minute and then you make the substitution. And somebody is saying, oh, because we should let, wait for him to come. Yes. Those reports and coming to give us report, these are normal formalities. It won't change anything. The report of Milo will not change anything. What it's required of us as people, as people who run football, should see clearly that Milo of 2010, 2009 is not the same Milo we see today. This is a fact. What makes him different Milo today? Milo met a couple of players who were in their prime, who were really good for the time he came. Even his own strategy of playing as a Samadhan of one man top. Ask yourself, which of the players can match the qualities of a Samad, as he himself has said some days back. And so if you go into a tournament and thinking that I have to go with Milo of 2009 and 2010, we are making a big mistake. After Milo left Ghana, what has he been achieved? Okay, so, so, so George, so George. This is left of the So George, Tell me. you will proceed, you will proceed. Then at this point, why are you blaming Milo when we can equally say that the appoint, appointing authority did not do due diligence having a square peg to occupy a round hole? But I've done that already. I don't need to be repeating myself. No, I've said that already. No, no. What uh, you're telling us is I've that, that Milo, the... what you're telling us is that the Milo of 2022 is not a Milo of 2010, right? Clearly understood because he met different crop of players. So if the appointing authority knew that Milo of 2010 is different from Milo of 2022, they shouldn't have hired him in the first place. For you to say that he's come and he's seated, he's not making substitutions when he has opportunity to make so. Why not put the blame squarely at the appointing authority for appointing the wrong person? I, I have said that already, so I don't need to repeat myself. I don't know how many times you want me to say it. Say it I now. Said we had no business to appoint Milo to lead us. I have said that already. Unless you want me to be repeating myself, I said, first of all, Milo of 2009 2010, yes, he achieved everything that he has to achieve yeah. within Ghana. Yes. But after that, what next? Was 10 years or 11 years of Milo's departure from Ghana? What did, what did he do with all the things that he went to? Tell me. So I have said that we had no business in bringing Milo back. But in any case, the authorities, the people in charge believe that, no, we disagree with you. We think that we have to bring Milo. They brought him. So fast forward. The man has gone to fail. So I have to blame. I have already blamed them. So I don't need to come back. I'm saying that the man they brought is a disaster. Have you, have you considered the financial implications of sucking Milo? Move down. First of all, let then... We also go back. If you are an administration going to appoint a coach for a, a, such an important tournament like a World Cup, and also an AFCON, you and I know the Ghanaians has been yearning and asking for us to win the AFCON, which has eluded us for the past 14 years. 40 years. And Ghanaians have been asking for this cup. Equally, yes, Ghanaians want to see us at the World Cup. If, if I am in charge in appointing Milo, I will use the, the AFCON, uh, AFCON uh, participation as a yardstick to even renew his contract to, go out, to ask him to continue. What am I saying? What I'm saying is that if I had had the opportunity to make input before Milo was appointed, I would say, Milo, go and do where at the AFCON 
or your, com your contract ends immediately after AFCON. But if you give him even one year, let's check Miro's salary. Ma Miro takes 30,000 30, if what uh, we have been if what we have been told is true. So even if you if you if you if you, if you stack Miro today, the maximum you pay will be maybe three hundred thousand dollars. That three hundred thousand dollars is is much better to spend three hundred thousand dollars and sack Milo than to keep Milo and will not qualify for the World Cup. I would take the risk to sack Milo and spend three hundred thousand and bring in the coach to qualify us to the World Cup. George, you talked about how um, Ghanaians have been yearning to win the African Cup of Nations. You were part of that administration that have that also struggled to win the African Cup of Nations. How come we've gone all these years without winning it? Uh, moved down. 2008 to till we left power. We came close. You came close, but you it, never won. The African Cup of Nations. Me, I have said that. I even said that maybe under Kitukiku, we are going to win it. See, with proper planning, we will continue to plan. One day we'll get it. But if we don't plan well and we embark on what we just did, we don't, there's no way we're going to win. Because the whole planning and the execution was shambolic. 2015, we made to the final. Unfortunately, we didn't win. You were the management committee chairman of, 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 of that team. What did you do different? That is um, from what we've, we've witnessed today. What did you do different in 2015? Uh, remember, we have then come from the World Cup. Yes. The issues of the World Cup, we have met the German Federal Commission and all that. Yes. We then appointed a new coach and we promised Ghanaians and asked Abraham Graham to go and do well. There was, there was, there was a, modest, a modest expectation from Ghanaians from us, especially at the backdrop of what has happened in Brazil. Yes. So we went in quietly, proper preparation. We did what we have to do and we, we were able to, at other time too, the players were, I mean, it was almost the same kind of players we had. We had almost all the stats available. We went into the competition with all the arrangement, the planning, and all that put together by the GFA. We made it to the finals. Unfortunately, luck was not on our side, especially when we are taking a two-way lead in a penalty shootout. So for me, I continue to say that I believe one day it will happen. But we must always plan well. And then if we are lucky, we want it to happen. But at this time, at this time, after, if you ask me, I think that the GFA, what Dr. Nyahu Tamako was saying, is actually not out of place. But to say we shouldn't go to the World Cup, that I disagree. We need, we need to spend money to develop football. We are not developing football. You see, we are riding at the back of oh, four times African champions. Oh, Ghanaians, we are talented. Oh, Ghanaians, we are already God given, we have our God given talent. Look, football all over the world is being developed. It's the reason why a small country like Comoros will be able to beat Ghana. Look, if you have been to Comoros and you know the country Comoros, I am fortunate to have led the Black Stars to play a 0 0 scoreline, 0 0 scoreline with the. In Comoros, Comoros that was 2015. Team. In Comoros. Yeah. Yes. And if you go there and you see the kind of team that has come to be Ghana, you will be from another Ghana. Uncle George, stay with me. I'll come back and ask you questions about um, whether we, will be, we should be willing to invest more in paying some of the best coaches in the world to manage the Black Stars. But I want to do a quick break. But before I do that, let me read some of your messages that have come through. And I have this one from. Um, it's, it's come from the U.S. He said, the coach says his contract is to qualify the Black Stars to the World Cup. If that's the sole reason for hiring him, firing him now is a breach of contract and his salary will still be paid. That's very true. I have the privilege of reading that contract between the Ghana Football Association and Milovan Rivach. Uh, it was clearly stated that he should also win the African Cup of Nations, but there were some um, clauses that were defined by the FA that if they want to fire him, the GFA said, if it is in the interest of football in the country, they can sack him. So it's a clause in, the, in there like that. This one, uh, he says that, how could Ghana have played Jordan Ayew as the main striker who hardly scores any goals at club level? For the three matches in the group stage, he did not shoot at goal more than two times in the three games he played. And please give, me local, uh, give local players the chance. Local players see this tournament as an opportunity to showcase their talents 
and will perform better than the foreign-based players. This one, good evening to all viewers. I perfectly agree with Mr. George Afriye. Our coach needs to be sacked because for now, we need a coach that's very active and up and doing. He says he's very sad. This one too, it says that, see, tell them not to come back because... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's do a quick break. When we come back, we'll see we'll do some more of your messages and also speaking to George Afriye, former vice president of the Ghana Football Association. He's here with us on Cameroon Soccer Fiesta. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. This is Cameroon Soccer Fiesta live on Joy Prime with me, Muftar Nabila Ablai. Today I'm having a conversation with the former vice president of the Ghana Football Association. He's also a former management committee chairman of the Black Stars. Cameroon Soccer Fiesta is proudly brought to you by Electoral Ghana, your home of electronics and appliances, and also supported by Samsung. They are saying that it is our passion, it is our game. Also, we have support from continental Africa. They say they are connecting the rest of the continent together. As well as Silver Star Auto, DBS Roofing, who are your experts when it comes to roofing. Electoral and Ghana, they say that visit any of Electoral and Ghana showroom for all the mega Afcon discount on your favorite Af Samsung Media Toshiba and NASCO Electronics and Appliances. For as low as 799 Ghana cities, you can enjoy live Afcon matches on NASCO 32-inch digital satellite television. Grab yourself a media button freezer starting from 1,499 Ghana cities and rely on our Toshiba 20 liters microwave to keep your food hot at all times. Electroland, your home of electronics and appliances. You can call them on 050 
3159739 for more information. Also, Samsung, they are offering you some special discount when you buy uh, air conditioner, television sets, refrigerators, and all that. They're also making available some special gifts for you when you buy some of their phones, especially the Samsung A12, uh, as well as the Samsung A22, and then they've got newest addition in there. So this soccer season, Samsung offers you the best deals to enjoy the games at home and also on the go. Get up to 30% off televisions, air conditioners, refrigerators, and washing machines, and amazing gifts. When you buy the Galaxy A03 Core, A12, A22, Galaxy Z Flip 3, and the newest addition, which is the Galaxy S21 FE. Enjoy this soccer season with Samsung. It is our passion. It is our game. Let's go back on Zoom and speak to George Afriye. Um, Mr. Afriye, tell us, many have said that Ghana is not willing to invest in the best. If you are willing to invest in the best, you should be ready to pay high for their services. $30,000 for a coach is pittance. That's what many have said. For instance, there were reports about how the FA wanted Heavy Renard, how they wanted the likes of Chris Hilton, how they, let, they wanted the likes of uh, Lofton Matels. But all these people, their figures were so high, Mr. George, the government of Ghana could not afford. If you want to compete against the best, be willing to pay high too. Yes, I agree with you. I think that as for, as for hiring the best, I'm also with those who are of the school of thought that if we really want to compete at the highest level, we must be willing to spend more to bring the best of coaches. But you see, fortunately for us, fortunately for us, we have had some coaches who have gone under training, who have gone under training coaching the Black Stars. One of them is Kwesiapia. Now, if you look at Kwesiapia's performance, before the World Cup or in the World Cup qualifying series yes. and then the World Cup proper. And all the issues surrounding 2014, personally, I don't think Kwesi Apia did badly. So moving forward, if we are giving him the opportunity to continue, he will have done learn from his, the, his past mistakes and then do better. Now, a new administration is ushered in place. He quickly said, I don't want Kwesi Apia. Well, some of us believe that maybe the new leader has a vision and he's, he has a plan of executing his four-year agenda to bring in new coach and to bring in new data. Hello, 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 Mr. George Afri, are you still with us? Correction. Fair enough. All of us gave him and then believe that, oh, whoever they were with, what did we see? We rather see a beer assuming the race or taking the mantle of as head coach. That was not convincing enough. As if that was the end, then from nowhere, they push the paddle button and says that no, CK cannot take us to the promised land. And so therefore we have to get rid of him. You remember when you had an interview with me far back in 2020, I told you that for me, I support any coach that the blacks at the Therefore, will appoint, especially if they appoint one of our own, because we have had the, the, the support from government that if you want to build the capacity of the Ghanaian coach, we are ready to support you. Yeah. So, so long as you appoint a local coach, we as government will support you and then to build the capacity and to make sure that very soon or sooner than later, a Ghanaian will take the man to them, be able to take us to wherever we want to go in our football. Now, if you look at what we are here, what we are seeing from the just ended AFCON, it means we, we, were, we took the wrong decision in sacking CK Akono. It's now clear. Take the percentages of, of a win as against uh, uh, that of, that of Milo. Yeah. from Milovan. Yeah. You realize that Milo has failed. He has failed. Why? And then my, 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 I moved out. My worry. And my sadness is that, why do we want to do this to one of our own, but we are not ready to sacrifice a Serbian? Why? Oh. If this was Kwesi Apia, 
I'm sure that you people will ask him if his wife and children are in London, he should continue to London. If this was Sige Akolo, I'm sure Ghanaians will be asking that Sige shouldn't come to Ghana and that he should go. But when it comes, when it comes, we must allow him to come prepare. He has a contract. Why? Was Kwesi Apia no under contract? Was Sige Akolo no under contract? How many coaches haven't we sacked when they were under contract? All over the world, coaches themselves will tell you, they are to be hired and fired. They are to be hired and fired. And so for me, the coach could not mandate the blasters at the after at the AFCON and he must be sacked. That's my position. What next for the Black Stars? What should we do? We need to we need to invest in development in Ghana. Trust me, recently I returned from South Africa. And if you see what other countries are doing. We have been priding ourselves of four times African champions. We are we know how to play football. We are talented already and all that. And we are not developing. We are not spending money to develop. See, players must be taught how to play football. This is what is being done. You see, the hot synodes, the Tariq Lamtis, the the Edinkatias, they just didn't come from the moon. England invested in development. It is the reason why we are now chasing them to come and play for Ghana. Please, let us spend money to develop our football. We must spend money to develop our youth football. How do we do it? We should go to the schools, have a collaboration with GES. We should invest from those who do coast football. Give them the kids. Let's train the, the coaches of the juvenile football teams. Let's train, run coaching course where players will be taught how to pass. They would have to pass, how to chest, how to head, how to kick. These are all things that we need to teach our young stars. We need to invest in training. Fortunately for us, fortunately, and I'm saying fortunately, because I am not uh, 1920, 1930 George Freire. I am the late 60s George Freire. The government of Ghana, and I'm repeating the, His Excellency President Akufuado's administration has done so well in terms of football infrastructure. Muftar, the President, His Excellency President Nana Akufuado, Adodanko Akufuado, has done so well in my field. My field is football. And today there are, there are astroturfs scattered all over the countries, led, led all over the country. Let's take advantage of that as football people and let's spend money to develop young, talented footballers. The future will look bright. George, um, I'm not going to digress a bit. I want to build a certain point. Do you still have interest in contesting for the position of GFA president? I'll come, I'm building a certain we'll start, point. We're not talking about last time. No, no, I'll come back. No, no I'm, I'm building a point. I'm building a point. I'll come back there. I'm building a point. I'm coming back to the Black Stars. What point, what, what point are you building? <laughs> okay, so the point Tell is me, that... I'm so, okay, so if Georgia Freire is voted GFA president, would he hire a local coach? Mustang. Mr. Edwin Kett Simon Okriko is the president of the Ghana Football Association. We football members elected him to a four-year term. It is his reign. Me, okay, so I am ready to support Kett... To, I am ready to support Kett any day, any time to execute his mandate. When his mandate finish, and there's the opportunity for someone else to take over, we we'll look at that. Okay, no, so, so, so my question was, my, okay, so let me rephrase the question. If George Afriye was the GFA president, would he have settled for a local coach instead of bringing in an expatriate? I was going to maintain Kwesi Afriye. Okay. Point well noted. So what it means is that you are going to stay with a local coach. Point well noted. But Georgia Freire, tell me one critical thing that the, the administration you were part of, the Kwesi Nyenteke administration, one critical thing that you did that within the space of 12, 14 years, Ghanaians felt that making to the semifinal of the African Cup of Nations was a bet right. Yeah. It is because there was a proper plan. And the preparation for every tournament, we take it seriously. You see, 
Mustaf, I have said it before, and I'll repeat it again. I said, the reign of Kwesi Yantechi, of which I served under him, never, and I mean never, interfered in the selection of players for the national team. Never. I'll tell you my personal story. I was the chairman of, the, when I was appointed as the chairman of the national at 23, yeah. there was a day I made suggestion to uh, Masu Ekonedo. Yes. Yeah. Masu Ekonedo named a squad and I just passed a comment, oh Maswa, why not A but B? Maswa reported me to Nyantechi. I was summoned to answer a question why I interfere with Maswa's selection. This is a fact. I only ask a question. Why A but not B? Are you so suggesting that, that? Are you suggesting the that? FA president, the FA president today, he said it on your network. Okay. Now, there is no way. I think you can play that. Audio yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very much aware of what he said. I'm very much aware of what he said. So, that, so I'm sorry. So he did a selection with Milo. Is that not so? But we cannot substantiate that, can we? Uh, but he said, but, but, but I didn't put those words. No, but if he said on yeah. radio that, if he said on radio that uh, nowhere in the world are coaches allowed to select players alone, there's but, but, always... But is, that, is, that, uh, 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 is that a, a statement of fact? You couldn't, you, you couldn't push him to show you one country where it, it, what he said is not true. It's not true. If you are a management committee, a coach, you can summon a coach. We've all been in management committee before, and we learn from the people we came to meet. If you are in a management committee, a coach submits a, a list. You can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can invite him for scrutiny and ask him, oh, coach, why are and not are and even you, media men, when you had the chance to ask the coach certain questions or certain players, didn't he tell you plain that it was his decision? That was what Milo told you. Yes. He so if it was his decision, if it was his decision, why, why, why are you dragging the GFA president? Is it, if Milo said that it was his decision to to name the squad, why are you dragging the GFA president into the picture? Exactly. So then my point is that what he told you at Joy FM is not true. It's not true. So, so Mil what Milo also told the media is not true. Is that what you're suggesting? No, what I'm saying is that what Ket said that nowhere in the world that they will allow the head coach to take the decision in terms of selecting players. I'm saying that it's not true. Okay. Head coaches are allowed to make the... So, it, you see, it is the reason why you can sack him. If you make him push to a coach's selection, what, what, what power do you have? In sacking him, when you had actually made the decision with him, how are you going to fire somebody who took a decision together? It is you need to give you can ask questions, no doubt about that. The coach, the management committee has every right, and we've done it. Look, at certain points, Mr. Bosu if I take uh, uh, exchanges between Avram Gant and Avram will walk out of the room with his face red, ask us a farmer. Uncle George, so, I, 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 Uncle George, Uncle George, let's wrap up the conversation. You can let's, ask so uh, you cannot impose players on a coach. Let's wrap up the conversation. If you are to recommend a coach, which who, who would you recommend? Who am I to recommend coach? No, if you are, if like if you have an opportunity to recommend, should I recommend the coach of Shubi B? <laughs> Uncle Coach, uh, Uncle George, uh, let's let's. Uh, why, why, let, <laughs> no, why, I know, I know your coach can do the job. I know your coach can do the job. One division one Lego zone three. Why are you laughing? Okay, of, offer one advice to Kato Kirk. Let's wrap up the conversation. I I I I'd rather to ask about the disbandment of the management team because. Bele also no, said no, that they should no, no, dis no, disband no, the management no, no. team. No, no, no. You see, if you go to a tournament like this and we don't perform well, you come up, you come back, you apologize to Ghanaians, you apologize to government because you raised their, their hopes. There was no need for us, especially when we are aware that 
we have a, a relatively young team with some uh, experience, some few experienced players. You should have actually not raised the hopes of Ghanaians in promising Ghana that we are going to beat Africa. For me, a quarterfinal berth or semi-final berth will have been a very good achievement and will build on that to go to the World Cup and also qualify for the World Cup and also to do well at the World Cup. So for me, they should come back, apologize, and then you should, you should stop this thing of somebody is an enemy, somebody doesn't belong here, and that these people are my enemy, and so therefore they cannot advise me. It, it's, it's wrong. You see, football, we don't do the NDC MPP politics. We don't do that. We are all we are all ready, myself and I know, for me, any day, any time. If Kenneth called me and said, George, you think that we need to qualify? And he has asked me, to be very honest with you, let me admit that when the 48 Division One clubs met the FA president, he said, that, oh, George, I need to come and see you because you have been there before. But I know that he was just doing that for the cameras. He just wants to make people know that. But he, doesn't, he didn't really mean what he said. Because in actual of what he said, he didn't follow up to do it. But I think that if Kets should come to any of us to help him and to support him to achieve, look, if Ghana football is better, me, I'll be number one beneficiary. So I support Kets. He should come back, apologize, and let's find a way. As for Milo, he should suck. He should be bold to start Milo okay. and then look for somebody who qualifies. Because if Milo cannot beat Comoros, he cannot beat Abon. How can he beat one of the nine, nine best teams in Africa? Please. Okay. We don't, if we cannot take our chances in AFCON with Milo, why should you take our chances to AFCON to the World Cup? Okay. I don't stop. Okay. George, we appreciate your time here on Cameroon Soccer Fiesta. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That was George Afri, a former vice president of the Ghana Football Association, a former management committee chairman of the Black Stars, joining us here to dissect some of the issues in the Black Stars team. One core thing he has mentioned is that. Milovan Rivac, the head coach of the team, should be sacked. Though Intel we picked earlier today showed that they were not ready to sack him, um, the call by Georgia Freire probably could happen, but we don't know when. Let's wrap up with some of your messages that have come through. And this one it says that um, <clears throat> Black Stars have finally broken our house once again. Say hi to Arsenal fans for me. <laughs> Let's Latification and this one says, please, we should not make the mistake of bringing back either CK or Kuno or Kwesi Apia. They're not the only coaches we can find in Ghana. We brought back Kwesi Apia twice, it didn't work. We brought back the white man, it didn't work. One interesting thing someone mentioned was that since Jesus said he was going to come back and has not come back, the second comments have, have, not, been, have not been great. And then this one, it says from uh, Seven Abu Aji, he says that he sent a message from South Africa. I think a GFA is supposed to be running by our former players, most especially those who has played football at the highest level. On this note, we say thanks very much for joining us for Cameroon Soccer Fiesta here on Joy Plan with me, Mukhtar Unadila Ablai. Up next, a hot take with Mercury. Just stay there and turn it up.